Hey folks, Steve here with another End of Empire video. Uh, this is the second part of our French and Indian War scenario uh, video, part two. Uh, and we are at the spring of 1757, and a lot has gone on. It'll be difficult to capture everything uh, quickly. Um, first, talking about the West. Uh, so we've had a couple instances where Braddock made his expedition, but it has ended in disaster. Like historical, though, there were some times where I thought he was going to make it. Um, he made a sojourn out there, uh, but was ambushed. He ended up being captured. He was eventually exchanged for Vaudreuil. He reconstituted the enlisted men, and he tried again. He got farther, uh, but then ambushed again, and uh, that was a near-run thing, and he was uh, killed on the second time. So he was captured um, the first time, uh, and then he was... Uh, due to die roll, and then he died on the second die roll. And so at this point, the British are kind of slowed down their ability to move forward toward Fort Duquesne, and the French are managing to bring some more of their allies on board. So definitely having a hard time. Um, in the most critical area on the uh, Lake Champlain Theater in the Hudson, uh, we had Amber Crombie build up a pretty potent, powerful stack and started marching down the Hudson River. It was then that Montcalm decided to take some of Discal's forces and leap forward on the attack because he had a uh, dire modifier advantage. So even attacking on a one to two column, uh, the plus two just made it really potent to try to do something. Um, and he ended up getting into these battles up and down the Hudson where they fought. He forced Abercrombie to retreat. He engaged again. And each combat was several combat rounds. So with linear combat, uh, you fight a combat, and then, you know, if someone didn't retreat, you can go again if the attacker passes initiative. Well, Montcalm can activate pretty much at will. And so he once he had a hold of Amber Crombie, he wouldn't let him go. And he fought, and he fought, and he fought. And we whittled down the British stacks quite a lot. Um, the British were able to use their provincials uh, the enlisted men to take the first step losses, but anytime they had to take two, we started to see some British losses creep in. Um, now, unfortunately, you know, in the process of doing that, Montcalm's army started taking step losses, and it was soon evident that he couldn't afford to lose any more uh, because he needed to uh, go back and let the uh, troops that are like, you know, these guys, we can, uh, we can voluntarily eliminate these steps that always come back in each spring to uh, replenish a regular that was injured. And so he kind of let off the gas and had to go back and started to replenish his units. But from there, Amber Crombie and Shirley uh, acted and combined stacks and went on the offensive in Albany. And this included some reinforcements that were coming from Boston that we had put there. There are these just big old four-step monster stacks that are in the uh, British force pool that were engaged in combat and just, they have huge combat factors. So over the course of several combats, um, you know, France eventually had to give up Albany and retreat back and is kind of battered. Maybe I, I got a little greedy with Montcalm and was trying to do too much damage. It just got to the point where he had to get out of there and he's, he's kind of hurting right now. We, we basically have seen the total loss so far of three, French regulars that we're not going to get back. Um, and the British, by comparison, uh, have lost um, a total of four across everything. I think only three of these were actually from the Hudson campaign. And we've also knocked these uh, two British four-step units down to their two-step equivalent, and they're in that stack in Albany. Um, it is important now that the British have taken Albany and freed up uh, this hex because now it means those reinforcements that were held up can come in. Uh, the, the, the enlistments that couldn't organize, well, now they're back. Um, and so now it's really a question of, you know, what what can the French do? I think I think what they need to do is fall back a little bit. I mean, it's been fun beating up on the British, but they can't keep this up forever and we've got a, we still have several depleted French units, so it, it could be the, that the French tries to get the heck out of Dodge a little bit, um, and I think we're going to see that happen uh, here soon. But 
Um, and because Montcalm so good, I mean, he basically only has to fight when he wants to. He can react pretty well and get away from the British if they try to engage. Um, so that's certainly something that they're going to look at taking advantage of over time. Um, and we're trying to get some more of these uh, draft replace, you know, the recruit replacements together with the stack to draft into the regulars. But um, it's just hard to get everybody moving uh, around. So, you know, we've got a lot of different actions over here where, you know, not much has, has really gone on yet of significance. Um, we're stuck in some tough situations where, uh, actually, I don't, yeah, I think I meant to remove him, put him here, my bad. Um, the, you know, the, basically no threat to Louisburg yet, which is to the advantage of the French right now, but um, I don't know. It's kind of hard to say, like, it's true the Amber Crombie stack has been roughed up very badly. Um, a lot of step losses inflicted on the British. Uh, so long as they can keep using the provincials to kind of shield the regulars, though, it's going to be really tough going. Um, on In some cases, you know, when the British are attacking uh, this stack in a fortification, it's a minus three to their die roll. So there's definitely some cases where it's highly attritional, but if the British push the attrition hard enough, they can break the back of the French army. And I think that's kind of their main goal or their main desire is to try to do that. Um, but, you know, it's the same, same thing. Any British regular steps lost is stuff that they're not going to get back later. So it's, it's all kind of tight right now. Um, it's all kind of tight. But the British uh, Iroquois loyalty tables back up to three, which may shift things back towards the French or back towards the British favor for native allies. So uh, pretty interesting. We'll see what happens. Um, we'll play through until the spring of 1758 and see what else happens. Okay, here we are, guys, in the spring of 1758, and I have to say it's not going well for the British at all. Um, yeah, I, it's tough. Um, the Montcalm bonus is what is just shifting the game so hard. Montcalm is so good. Um, so over here, we remain incapable of venturing forth. Um, you know, without a leader, these guys just can't do much. So the French kind of have this locked down. I should, I should point out that a while ago we had, uh, London, Loudon, I'm sorry, Loudon, uh, captured. Well, we have Shirley captured as well. And so the only real leader on the board that can operate for the British right now is Abercrombie and, uh, he decided to try to take the fight to the French, and he had a pretty huge stack. Um, and he could have probably done better. I left some of these guys behind because I want them to form, you know, a reserve and then also to uh, potentially support an invasion of Louisbourg and then eventually uh, uh, an attack on Quebec. So I didn't want to, like, you know, throw these guys all in the wood chipper. It's probably a good thing that I did. Because due to some activation shenanigans, uh, poor Abercrombie got caught out in the wilderness in the winter for two turns. And so he first lost a bunch of provincials and enli enlistments at the end of the winter. And then a whole bunch of his regulars took attrition. And then they took attrition again with Montcalm throwing in a combat, uh, dealing a few more steps. And so we've seen an entire British army basically laid waste. Um... Not, you know, for there was an attempt by uh, these rangers to disrupt the French supply line, but they managed to get pushed around a little bit, and some dice rolls didn't go their way, uh, and they got uh, eliminated. And so we're, we're kind of in this interesting spot where um, the British still control as we go. I can't find the time to get somebody over there to make a difference. Maybe with Descal now, but um, I just, I can't get anything going. And the fleets aren't showing up to try for Louisburg. Um, oh, and I should also, also add that these guys are eliminated. Why are they eliminated? Well, um, during, the, uh, during the winter, we did have the French out here during the fall turn, so this was blockaded. And then... You know, these 
Well, actually, hold on. Maybe they aren't. Maybe they aren't, because I think they had town supply. Yeah, they had town supply. I'm sorry, guys. I probably didn't need to move this guy, so I should just put him back. That all right? Sorry, guys. I got it. I got a little confused. We're we're all set. Um, we did have some reinforcements of a friend actually go in to Louisburg just to kind of keep it some level of of strong over here uh, with a leader to make a difference. So we're just trying to make sure Louisburg is secure. Um, right now, I'd say Montcalm's winning, you know, the center front, the, the Western front out in, out in the wilderness currently still holding on to Fort Duquesne. So it's, it's very tough to figure out now, like what can the British do? They're going to get more reinforcement reinforcements next turn. There's a whole big stack. They're going to get some more stuff. Uh, but it's starting to become uh, a very difficult effort now. I, th this probably shouldn't have happened. I shouldn't have let that happen. Um, they were trying to get out uh, and take the fight to Montcalm to burn away the French uh, regulars, but he got caught out here in the wilderness and he couldn't activate. And then the the French commanded, you know, sent a guy over here to simply cut their supply line at Saratoga, uh, and he can't trace supply. He can't trace supply out of the wilderness through this hex or anywhere else for that matter. Um, and so he's stuck. He can't get North American supply. He, he couldn't get overseas supply. And I mean, that was the best way to take step losses off the British. Um, and now, you know, the French are feeling pretty good. They got to watch out, but they're feeling pretty good. Um, and on top of that, I forgot to put in the French reinforcements or replacements, I should say, into these hexes. So I need to do that. Um, so that's my bad. Uh, so things are going well for the for the French right now. Now, you know, we'll we'll see what happens over the next campaign season of what changes. But I think Abercrombie needs to get the heck out of here and get back to Albany or get somewhere and try to. Uh, try to do something else, um, get these guys pulled up. You know, if we look at what's coming, we're going to get Amherst, who's a pretty good leader. We're going to get Forbes. We're going to get a whole bunch of guys here. Uh, and they may be able to make a difference too. It's really hard to say. Um, hard to say. Uh, all right, let me, uh, let me go through the next one. I'm trying to figure out, like, where's my wolf counter? Because surely I have one, right? Like he's somewhere. Oh, there he is. So he is coming next turn. That's going to make a pretty big difference. Um, so let's hope uh, that the British are able to figure something out and make this a more contested game, because right now they're hurting. They're hurting big time. Um, okay, guys, we'll come back in the spring of 1759 and see where things stand. And and when we look at how much more there is in the game, if if the French can hold on for another couple of years, they're going to win the game. So it's it's exciting. Uh, it has a lot to do with Montcalm's uh, a combat bonus that has allowed them to punch around the British. And then the fact that the British don't have any leaders they're about to get enough reinforcements to shift the scale in their favor, maybe. So we'll see. See you in one game year. Okay, guys, here we are in the spring of 1759, and things have changed, but it's a little wonky, to be honest. Um, out here in the west front, or, you know, whatever you want to call it, the left. <laughs> um, so a couple of interesting things went on. I had set up... Um, Forbes to take command of our expeditionary uh, army, and they did actually eventually take Fort Duquesne. They they beat back and dispersed some native allies of the French, and then took Fort Duquesne. Um, just you know, just managed to do so. Dispersed some French defenders, um, and afterwards, over the course of the turns, they actually brought in the Delaware as a British allied tribe because they uh, fulfilled the requirement to hold Fort Duquesne. Unfortunately, uh, <laughs> the remaining units had to withdraw from Fort Duquesne. So it is currently uncontrolled 
as it happens. And uh, now uh, I have Stanwix, which has replaced, I replaced Forbes down here, commanding some units to hopefully run back up there and take control of Fort Duquesne before these guys do something silly um, and make it so that uh, they can continue to get that influence over the tribes. Um, we are starting to need to think about something to do with the Cherokee Village um, and figure out what units can we allocate for the job, and I'm not sure quite yet. Uh, we had a lot of trouble with the French fleet being near, but now they're pretty much never going to come back, or it's very hard for the British fleet to show up. They had won a, a naval battle against the British on one turn, and uh, we still have not seen the British take... Uh, Louisburg, because of that, but they're trying to reorganize uh, forces for another attempt. It's principally going to be Amherst who's going to do uh, do the do there. Meanwhile, uh, Wolf has uh, smartly spent winter near Albany. Um, he was actually up here and pulled back and, and brought some units over. Um, but we've not yet been able to crack uh, Montcalm's position, um, though this guy kind of now has a nice river path in the supply. So things are kind of, uh, things are still tight. Um, I'm starting to doubt the ability of the British to make a breakthrough here. Um, if they could roll over Montcalm or something, they could maybe, be, maybe get to the point where, uh, maybe get to the point where they can get up to, to Montreal and then maybe, um, maybe, Quebec that way. Uh, they certainly have a lot of factors. I've actually gotten to the point of using the holding box. Technically, um, I'm cheating a little bit, and this is this is an American main army representing these guys, but sitting in the southern army box, just so I don't have to be running around too much uh, around the map in my table. Um, so you can see, I mean, the French don't have that much you know what, 18, 28, 33, 35 combat factors or so, and then the British have a whole lot. Um, and due to the size of some of these units, some light infantry and some of the provincials still here, um, it's not as easy to just uh, ambush these guys. Um, so they, they always have enough factors that uh, our ability to ambush them is somewhat mitigated and it tends to be just a straight-up fight in the wilderness, in linear combat. And uh, unfortunately for for Wolf, he rolled some sixes and ended up not activating a couple of turns where he probably would have pushed on Montcalm before the winter. So that's definitely one of those situations where damn that damn activation die roll can really screw you up. But right now, the French hold an okay position. But you know, it, it could collapse, and it could collapse very quickly. Uh, we've just not seen the die rolls go well for um, the British to take Louisburg, but if they can do it, it'll happen pretty fast, and then they're going to be coming into Quebec pretty fast. So it, it could just mean that this goes, like, it goes really slow until it doesn't, but uh, I'm not sure. So uh, I'll go ahead and play through the next campaign, and we'll come back in the spring of 1760 and see what the game situation is. All right, hey guys, uh, here we are at spring 1780, and it is definitely a climactic time here in the war. Um, gosh, what, what, what has happened? Well, um... The British pushed on from Fort Duquesne, headed for Fort Niagara, um, hoping to kind of blast open that side of things. But right before they got to Fort Niagara, the leader uh, slowed down and has basically lost momentum. Uh, and then a bunch of his enlistments <laughs> went home. So he's kind of stuck out there. He does have some coverage from uh, the Delaware tribe, but uh, things are kind of tough. I do have Gage down here ready to take some uh, reinforcements, and then he's going to try to come up and take the Cherokee village. Um, unfortunately, I, I do think that the French are going to win this one because here is the reduced armies on the map. I almost don't even really need to use the, the army markers anymore, but the damn French caught the British with their pants down and cut their supply line 
on a very lucky activation die roll, they managed to just get uh, what was really right here. And that dealt at least one attrition to many units. The one unit that, uh, so I guess I should say the British stomped their way up Lake Champlain and Montcalm did what he could. What's crazy is that like, you know, both, both leaders can basically have it be that um, they can just keep fighting and fighting and fighting and fighting. And so these battles become super bloody uh, which does not favor the French at all, and, and they basically have to be in fortifications and hope that a result comes up that gives an attacker retreat, and then the possibility that Wolf doesn't activate again or has to use more movement points until he's out. And so we saw just a pushback, 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 uh, and eventually Montcalm was just retreating and trading space for time around Montreal. He put some uh, units in with uh a leader and then vacated himself wolf took montreal left a unit behind to garrison it and then moved on and so right now montcalm is uh fortified in the three rivers town one of the two remaining supply sources um wolf is outside of it but again he he suffered a number of losses here that have greatly reduced his army um, and the only reason he has an army at all is from an urgent activation from Amherst. He just got the right die roll to activate in winter. And he went and swooped his way up and cleared uh, a native ally that was causing the supply problems. Um, and so far, the French have not been able to do anything about that. So by restoring supply, you know, those guys were safe. But is that going to be enough British troops to take? The final area? Um, I don't know. They have never lost Louisbourg. Now, uh, Louisbourg is not a Canadian supply source. It's a supply source itself, but it's not um, one of the victory condition. Uh, at least I don't think it is. Let me double check. I'm pretty sure it's not. Right. It, it is not. It is not a uh, Canadian supply source. So there's 4923, which we've kept garrisoned the entire game, and we haven't lost it, so the British kind of got that one for free. And then it was going to have to be uh, the three in Canada itself, which would be Montreal, Three Rivers, and Quebec. So right now, if the French can hold on to Three Rivers and Quebec for, what, two more turns, three more turns? I guess it's three more turns. Um, they'll win... But at the same time, the British have to uh, get to the Cherokee Village. And actually, I should I should correct what I just said. I don't think the British are going to win anyway, because uh, they're not going to be able to do their withdrawals. Um, make all required West Indy withdrawals. Well, let me tell you, on turn 36, they're going to need to withdraw six steps of British provincial regulars. So I can do these six right there, and then... Uh, let's see, on turn 39, they got to withdraw 23 steps of British or provincial regulars, which, um, let's see, we could do, let's see, those are all enlistments, so I don't think they count. Uh, yeah, they don't count. So, one, two, three, and yeah, I don't think they're going to have enough. I don't think they're going to have enough. I'm trying to look at, like, what units would they have been withdrawing, and I just don't see how they would be able to do it. They, there's not enough on the board. So, um... Let me continue playing through and just seeing how this runs. I'll play at least till the end of turn 32. So let me take care of that quick and we'll come back, guys. But I, I, will, I would say this is probably a French victory, just given the fact that, like, here's the dead piles. Um, just bloody, bloody combat. Uh, just have not been able to push our way up Lake Champlain. Have still not taken Louisbourg. Multiple failed attempts. And we're just not making headway. Um, and... It's it's just it's just tough, guys. Um, I think the British could conceivably get into Quebec, but it, it will be too costly for them in the long run.
Um, let me run through it. Okay, here we are, guys, at the end of turn 32, and I and I think that's this is going to be game. I'm pretty pretty certain. Um, so let's take a look around the map and see what happened. Well, one, so this is one of those things. If it was like, hey, let me change my mind and say we were only going to play the main campaign uh, instead. Well, you know, the the British expedition, which was comprised of provincials uh, and Gage as our leader, uh, struck out for the Cherokees and failed in the uh, the activity. Um, the ambush of the Cherokee managed to roll uh, the perfect die roll to eliminate the stack. Anything else would have likely meant that they were going to be taken out, quite possibly, but the uh, French have failed to take uh, the Cherokee village. But, you know, that seems a little unfair, like, okay, you know, should the should the British lose because of that? Well, let's just say we ignored, the, ignored it and said we weren't doing that. Um, because we were using provincial units from down here that would have never really made a difference up here. Um, not in my mind anyway, because they have to reset so often that, you know, maybe it's a wash for units we wouldn't have used. Uh, we still never made it out to the Detroit or Niagara or Frontenac, though we held on to Oswego the whole time. The British even set up a line here to help protect the supply lines to the north. And actually, we ended up capturing Montcalm. Um, Nobody, none of the leaders really, only a few leaders have died this whole game. And every time Wolf or Montcalm, you know, got in danger, they just never uh, had the die rolls, oops, uh, the die rolls to, to be killed. But we got a bunch of captured French leaders. The uh, British did capture Louisburg uh, and they moved the Ranger in to hold the Hex. And then we had an invasion for Quebec and these guys landed uh, here, and I chose not to try to immediately attack to just get them safe on the continent. Um, so it's less about amphibious assault or just marching. And you can see that the British had, had taken Montreal. They swapped units, left the guy behind. They managed to take three rivers and captured Montcalm. And then... Uh, they left these guys behind because they can't attack anyway, and then they would, they were trying to march on, but they ran out of gas, and they just couldn't activate uh, anymore to uh, get into Quebec. So um, that's it. And so I guess if you were adjudicating this based on the main campaign, and we tried to say that the Cherokee stuff didn't matter as much, and it's all in the margins, um, the British still would have lost. Uh, because they didn't take Quebec, though uh, it, it was damn close. Basically, we would have just needed one more turn. One more turn of activating Wolf would have been enough for, for British victory. Now, if we were keeping with the full campaign, and we looked at... Um, we looked at, you know, the withdrawals, the French would win anyway. So... Um, Yeah, so the first condition doesn't apply. So the, the British having control of Quebec by the end of turn 32 did not happen, which means the, uh, the French win the game. Now, if we had gone on and, and the British captured Quebec, the reality is we wouldn't have been able to make the, uh, the required withdrawals to, uh, to go fight in uh, Dominica, Martinique, and Havana. Now, you know, here's here's your dead pile again. I'll just show that. Here, here are the, I think, were the key factors for French victory in this campaign. One is that uh, we used Montcalm aggressively early, and we just beat up on Abercrombie. Um, now, that cost us, uh, in terms of French steps, a decent bit. But what it meant was that the British had to start from that further back, basically, in terms of steps and combat power. Um, the delay on Louisburg, you know, repeated attempts and failures at Louisburg probably contributed to things, just not getting the right activations to get it taken care of. Um, and maybe we should have sent Wolf there first and just gotten Louisburg taken care of. 
And maybe that's a better play. Um, you know, I sent him up into Champlain, but it might have been better to focus him on getting Louisburg first, then transporting him back to, you know, Boston or something, and then moving him up. Uh, given how strong Wolf is, that, that probably would have been the better play. Uh, but in this case, it just didn't work out that way. The other thing was the very lucky attrition that we caused to the British Army had we not been able to do that. Uh, it is more likely that Wolf would have been able to steamroller his way uh, up the St. Lawrence River to Quebec uh, better than he did this time. Um, so, yeah, I mean, generally, you know, as mentioned before, French and Indian War, I mean, it's always, every game is tilted to the British in terms of the military achievements, almost certainly going to get, you know, we, heck, we had this guy marching to Quebec because he had nothing better to do. You know, you have this preponderance of force to try to make efforts um, and the reality is just that, you know, you need to, uh, you need to get into the cities and Montcalm just managed to, uh, keep Wolf tied down long enough and enough, uh, rating of supply lines and stuff that kind of kept the armies from moving quickly. Um, yeah, just, it was very close. I mean, honestly, I think this is one of those things like, again, if I were playing the main campaign, we we would be thinking awfully close British victory. The fact that playing the full campaign, we have this very stringent um, stringent withdrawal requirement is rather interesting, but um, I don't know. It's a lot of steps, to be honest. Like, okay, 29, 36, 37 steps. And to be clear, these are provincial regulars. So when they talk about like, oh, it's either British regulars or provincial regulars, this is a provincial regular. Maybe I need a, because the colors are kind of hard to tell. Let's show the distinction here. So the unit on the left is a little more red. That's a regular. That's a uh, provincial regular. A little hard to see. If you're colorblind, I could see this being a nightmare, but um, so there it goes. And you need a whole lot of steps. Um, and again, so like when I look at all the different steps that are that are possible like there's some of these four step units so you could probably like if you kept these guys oh, that's a that's not the right guy um where are these guys at i've made a mess of my table um it's like okay here's eight steps so that's a good chunk of the way there, right? But you gotta, you know, if they were damaged, then that's only six steps that you're gonna take off the map, right? So so you really have to have an army that, I mean, in, in the hindsight of the scenario, and I guess I should have known better as the British, I guess I just didn't play well as the British, as, as well as I should have in this campaign. If you're gonna play the full campaign, you need the army to quickly take Louisbourg, pressure Quebec, quickly take down the French and have done so with enough um, with enough steps that you can withdraw them off the map um, in heaps and bounds, like a lot, I guess, just a lot more than I ended up with, and it just being very attritional and very bloody. Um, and maybe that's to, you know, when we have Montcalm, like that's to your advantage, you want to draw the British into those battles. And maybe what Wolf should have done is rather than, you know, fight these repeated combats, wearing the French out, they should have said, okay, hey, I, I'm going to not continue the battle. You know, I'm going to want to retreat or something and, and hold back or not get locked into these like constant long-term battles and just play, you know, let the French play a little space for time but get into a better position each time we attack, and maybe that would have been better. Um, it's really hard to say. Uh, for a long time, the French had a powerful stack that could hold its ground against the overwhelming men uh, that were with the British, but it just, over time, it wasn't enough. Um, anyway, uh, this was this was fun, guys. The French and Indian War, um, you know, if I were to, if somebody said, hey, do you want to play a, a war game on the French and Indian War, I would still probably play Wilderness War instead. Um, just because I think that's a more interactive game that you can teach somebody. This, I think, is a good exercise, and I could definitely see where this is would be more interesting 
opposed because that's where you're trying to make these tough decisions. I can't surprise myself, right? But um, where, you know, you're trying to fight this out. I think the tough thing is for the French to feel like they can win. Like in this case, they won. But a lot of it is because of the high threshold the British need to meet. But either either way, I mean, they managed to hold Quebec. So that's something. A, a, a It's a victory in that we did better than history. But then I also must have not played very well as the British. I feel like a competent British player is going to win every time in this scenario. It just kind of feels that way, right? Because you just have so much at your disposal to, to leverage. Um, and I'm just not that competent at the game at this point. Um, so there you go, guys. That's French and Indian War. I'm going to call it here. I'm not going to play through the rest of it. We, The British have taken too many losses. You know, we're going to sign a peace treaty, you know, as part of the Seven Years' War. Um, and, and who, you know, uh, due, due to fighting in the Caribbean that the British can't support, you know, the, the British probably get to keep a lot of their territory, um, even though the, the British have captured Louisbourg and Montreal and Three Rivers just... You know, you can imagine the, the French have probably overrun the Caribbean holdings of the British at this point since so they can't be reinforced. And, uh, you know, there's some some agreement to be made there that the British get to keep some of their Caribbean stuff if the French get to keep this stuff. So you're off onto a, a historical path there. So, okay, guys, well, thanks for watching. Uh, we've got more videos on End of Empire to come soon. Uh, they're going to be... Uh, it's not going to be the American Revolution, actually. There is one, at least one smaller scenario uh, that we'll play through before we move on and uh, go from there. But very soon we'll hit the American Revolution. So thanks for watching, guys. I hope this was uh, an enjoyable video for you. Until the next one, take care. Keep on gaming.